Jesus can heal you everywhere you hurt. Hi, I'm Father Cedric, the host of Live With Passion. I'm so glad that you tuned into the program because I want you to know that Jesus can heal you everywhere you hurt. Physically, mentally, emotionally, your memory, Jesus can heal you. I want to share with you Isaiah 43. And it's a beautiful verse that goes like this. Remember not the former things. Don't consider the things of old. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Do you not perceive it? It springs forth. I will make a way in the wilderness and streams in the desert. Wow. You know, the desert is such a dry place, very arid. I've been to the deserts in Egypt, been to deserts in Judea. And it's a place where there is no life. And Isaiah is prophesying that there's going to be water, streams, life in the desert. Maybe you feel like you're going through a desert right now because your body is hurting and you're going through all kinds of problems and difficulties. Maybe there's guilt or shame or self-rejection or whatever it could be. Well, I want you to know that there's about to be streams in your desert. Stay tuned in. Keep watching. Come to faith right now. God is about to touch you. I'm so glad that you're watching this program right now. Jesus, in his ministry, it's clear. You don't have to be a biblical scholar to see this. One truth about him is that he was a healer. Everywhere he went, he healed them. Lepers, paralyzed people, blind, deaf people, mute, disabled, people with fevers, people that were bleeding, people that were mentally troubled, emotionally troubled. Jesus can heal you everywhere you hurt. I remember I was giving a mission in Metairie, Louisiana. Metairie is part of New Orleans, and I had been to that church before. Largest crowd was the day we were going to have the healing service. And at the healing service, I have the oil of the sick. That's the oil of anointing. And I mean, there were probably 600 people gathered all around. And a lot of the people that were gathered were elderly because they knew that the healing service was coming and they wanted their ailments, their illnesses taken away. And as I stood before the 600 people, I tried to stir up faith because God works through faith. The title of this series, the name of this series is that God is good all the time, all the time God is good. And yes, God is good, but his goodness flows through faith. Those streams in the desert come through faith. So I tried to stir up faith and I was looking at everybody as I was preaching and I was telling them, I, I want you to believe that you can be healed. I want you to believe that God is going to touch you. I want you to believe that God has a healing for you here right now today. And I say the same thing to you that are watching by television. I know that many of you are elderly. I get letters from you. Some of you are even in your 90s, amazingly. And your body doesn't work like it used to. I understand that. And there are ailments of eyes and ears and arthritis. There are ailments of the back, especially, and hips and knees. And I want you to put that before God right now, because I believe that God is about to do a healing in your body, that you can experience something physical right now, as well as emotional and in your mind streams in the desert. So I want you to get comfortable and I want you to simply think and to pray, I believe. Jesus, as you touched so many people in the days that you walked the earth, I pray that you will touch your people watching right now. Many of your people are hurting and they have physical ailments that are uh, hurting them in many different ways. Please take away the pain, bring healing to arthritis, 
take away back issues, help people that are suffering with heart problems, and we lift up to you every ailment of every person watching right now. Jesus, in your gentle, powerful way, I pray that you will touch people, bring them healing at this moment. Do you sense that? Do you sense him touching you right now? And I pray that you will bring healing, cure, blessing. Heal your people, Lord. Do something great. As you're watching this program, you're going to receive a healing uh, throughout the entire program. This moment, as the program goes on, I want you to believe and keep believing. And you should sense something. You should sense God moving. God, there's an anointing on this program for you right now. You should sense God moving through this program to touch you. I'm not asking for money. I just want you to be touched. I'm a Catholic priest, vow of poverty. I have no false motives. I simply want you to be touched and healed by the power of Jesus Christ. Now, when you do receive your healing, and I pray that you will through this program, I want you to write me and tell me what happened because I'm believing for great things and I'm believing that God is going to touch you right now because God does touch his people. God touches people in every different way, in many different ways. And I remember when I had that anointing and all those people were there, I told them that God can heal you physically. And I made a distinction between the word healing and cure. And this is something that I was taught in the seminary. Healing is something different than cure, but it includes cure. And let me explain. Cure is something we're all familiar with. We're believing that our bodies are going to be cured and we're going to come to complete health. And that can happen. And I'm hoping that that does happen. And that's what I'm believing for this program, that you will experience a cure right where you need it by the power of God, simply because God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. In addition, there's something called cure and there's something called healing. And healing goes beyond cure. You see, Jesus cured people to attract them to his message. And his message was a message of eternal life. His message was a message that would bring them forever with God in heaven. So the curing that he was doing, of course, he cured because he loved people. But the curing that he was doing was really pointing toward his message because all the people that were cured died. Even when he raised Lazarus, he resuscitated Lazarus from the dead. Lazarus died again. But the purpose in that resuscitation was that it would point to Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life, who is eternal life. So cures are only temporary, and they point to Jesus. But healing is eternal, and it brings us life. So healing has to do with comfort. It has to do with strength, peace, a sense of God's presence with you. And that's what I really want you to sense, that right in the midst of your situation, you are being healed. A friend of mine just had a hip operation. And right before he had the hip operation, I anointed him with the sacrament of the sick, the oil of healing. And I told him that God can cure you. He can cure your hip if he wants to. But most of the times what God does is he's with you, he strengthens you, he comforts you, and he gives you power and peace to face your operation in a wonderful way. He has now come through that operation and he came through it well because God was with him. We've all heard that beautiful poetry called Footprints. Remember the man has a dream and there's two sets of footprints in the dream. And then he starts to go through a hard time and there's only one set of footprints. And then he wakes up and he prays. He goes, Lord, I didn't understand this. I, when things were going well, there, you were standing right there beside me. But when I started going through some hard times, you abandoned me. There was only one set of footprints. And then he sensed that the Lord was telling him, you misunderstood the dream. Those one set of footprints were mine. When you were going through the hard times, I was carrying you. So that's healing. The sense that God is with you, sense that God is strengthening you so that you can bear up 
with any cir circumstance, any situation, any difficulty, any suffering that you have, because God is our healer. There's a name for God in the Old Testament, Jehovah Rapha, which means God is our healer. You see, God is good all the time, all the time God is good. So when you think about healing, yes, think about cure, and I'm believing that you're going to receive that, but most of all, think about comfort, strength, God with you, peace, the ability to face your situation, that challenges make champions, and you can do it because God is with you. I believe in healing and I believe in cure, and I can tell you why, because I've experienced a lot of that in my own life. Uh, some of it, not a lot of it, but enough to know that God is our healer and God is good all the time and all the time God is good. I remember one time I went to a religious conference and I was receiving the word and being there with a lot, thousands of other people and enjoying it. Then I just went back to my hotel room and I went to bed and as I'm laying in bed, all of a sudden the bed started shaking. <laughs> and I th it was in California at the time, so I thought to myself, are we having an earthquake? What's going on here? I never felt this before. It wasn't the bed that was shaking. I was shaking. And I wasn't cold. I didn't have the flu. There was nothing wrong with me. I came to realize that God was touching me because I was open to his word and listening to his word and wanting to grow in him. And he was telling me, Cedric, I love you. I'm with you. And I pray that you'll experience a touch. I love that song, He Touched Me. And it goes something like this, shackled by a heavy burden neath a load of guilt and shame, then the hand of Jesus touched me and I'm no longer the same. He touched me, oh, he touched me, and oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened and now I know that he touched me and made me whole. So I want you to, to believe in the goodness of God. That's the, that's the whole, this whole series is all about God is good all the time. And all the time God is good. He hasn't abandoned you. He loves you. He, he reached out to the marginalized people Jesus did of his day. People that were undeserving, sinners, broken people, people on the margin. And they are the ones that received healing, grace, uh, cure even. So, I believe that God has a touch for you and he's touching you right now through this program in extraordinary means and ordinary means, simply by listening to this program, watching by TV. Some of you are listening by radio and by the internet. He's touching you right now. He's with you. He'll never abandon you. And then I want you to know that healing and cure isn't just physical. It goes beyond the physical to the emotional to memory, to emotions. See, we're human beings and we're comprised of more than just our body. <laughs> now I know, I get, I get it that it's our body that usually has a lot of the trouble, but we have trouble in all kinds of different ways. I remember the story of Joyce Meyer, if you know anything about Joyce Meyer. She's on TV and preaches the gospel and helps really tens of thousands of women everywhere. Well, anyway, she was abused by her father sexually as a young girl. Well, this caused a lot of shame and a lot of guilt and a lot of self-rejection in Joyce. In fact, she grew up with a shame-based nature because her childhood was stolen from her by her dad. She wasn't allowed to play and she was abused sexually, as I said, and as I said, shame-based nature. Well, in time, she came to Christ and Jesus touched her, touched her emotionally, and brought about a great healing, and raised her up to have this wonderful ministry, especially to women, women that have suffered with abuse, to bring healing everywhere. And her testimony uh, has actually something very beautiful. And she shares about how God touched her, and she's overcome the shame and the guilt and the self-rejection. And she makes this audacious statement. She said, I would go through all of that self all of that abuse that my father gave me and that self-rejection and that shame-based nature that I had again if I could experience what God has done in my life again. So in other words, she said it was all worth it. All that pain, 
all that suffering, all that abuse. And we're talking about her own father abusing her sexually. See, that's how good God is. He brings about healing and resurrection and new life. And I want you to receive that. Perhaps as you're watching this program, you've been abused by your own father or somebody close to you, a relative, or some type of physical abuse, emotional abuse. I want you to know that God is healing you right now. God can heal you everywhere you hurt. And then what about emotions? Uh, I think about fear, for example. I've told this story in other programs, but when I was a young man in high school, uh, everything was going well. I was in ninth grade in English class, started to do a reading. I'm reading in front of my classmates. All of a sudden, my heart started beating really fast, and I had to stop because I couldn't breathe. <laughs> For the first time in my life, I had a panic attack. And that's the first time it happened, but every time that I got with other people again in public to read, my heart would start beating real fast again. I would start to have a panic attack, and it was awful. And I developed a fear, and I started to avoid every situation where I would get in front of people to read, never mind speak, just read in public. And I started to box myself in, and I was afraid. Well. God touches me in college and touches me with the Holy Spirit, assures me that he's with me. See, that's a healing. The healing that we need most is deep within. Yes, we need his, uh, physical healing, physical cure, but the healing that we all need that lasts, and that's the thing about healing, cure is temporary, healing lasts. The healing that we mostly need is a healing with God. So God touches me. I sense that he's calling me to preach of all things. And it's like, I'm scared stiff. How are we going to do this? And what happened to me? And this is my testimony for healing. I started facing my fears. See, when God is with you, you have a new courage. You have new bravery because you know that you're not alone anymore. So I started facing my fears. And by the way, that's the way out of fear is it's called desensitization. You have to slowly and more and more face what you're afraid of. Uh, one woman comes to my missions. She lives in Connecticut. She drove all the way down to Florida to come to my parish mission where I'm preaching. Really proud of her because she has a fear of crossing bridges. And for her to get to that mission, she had to cross all kinds of different bridges to get down to that mission. And I applauded her because I know her story. What is that? Well, that's Jesus being with her, helping her to face her fears. Have you ever seen the, remember the, the Old Testament, there was that situation where they were bit by snakes and because they had sinned, they were bit by snakes and they were dying in the desert. And so they plead to God and to Moses, help us, help us, you know, we're sick, we're dying because we're being bitten by all these snakes. And Moses comes up with this solution, God gave it to Moses, to take one of the snakes that bit them, put it on a pole, hold it up, and anybody who just looked at the snake would be healed. Have you ever seen a doctor right outside the doctor's office? Often many of them have this pole with a snake around it. And that's the symbol of healing. And what it is is you got to quit running from what's bitten you. You have to quit running from what you're afraid of. In order to experience healing, you have to look at what you're afraid of and quit trying to escape. Healing occurs because God is with you and you're willing, because you have the power, you're willing to face what you're afraid of. And that's how you overcome your fears. I have on my website, if you go to my website, a free booklet called Face Your Fears. And it talks more about the healing that can happen, not when you run, but when you look at the snake that bit you. And by the way, Jesus used that when he talked about the cross. He said, just like the snake was, the serpent was lifted up in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up that all who believe in him will have eternal life. That's the ultimate healing that everybody needs. It's called salvation, redemption. And you can't earn it. You don't deserve it. There's nothing you can do to get it, but you can believe. It's the final healing 
The final healing is redemption, salvation. You just simply look to Jesus. Those of you who may have just kind of tuned into this program and flipped in by accident, I hear from you all the time. People write me letters. I wasn't even looking for you, Father Cedric. I just flipped in, but you speak in such a way that I can understand. Well, I want you to know that God is calling you just to look to the cross. Your sins are forgiven. You have eternal life. That's healing. And I pray with you right now, surrender your life to Christ. This program is all about healing. And even if you go to church and, you know, you go to church all the time, I want you to, to know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Surrender your life to him. Just close your eyes right now. Jesus, I surrender to you. I believe you died on the cross for me. I believe you want to bring me eternal life and healing. Jesus, I believe I am saved. I have eternal life. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Wow, that's the healing I'm talking about. I hope that you're cured physically. I hope you experience emotional healing. Yes, I want that for you. I hope you're able to let go of the things of the past and pressed on. But most of all, I pray that you will experience eternal life, the healing that comes from the cross. This is for all people. Jesus said, when I am lifted up, I will draw all people to myself. So let's continue to talk about healing. So I had panic attacks and now I face my fears. And I'm not saying that I'm totally all together. I'm still nervous and I get afraid, but I don't run anymore. When you run, it gets worse. But when you face it, it brings healing. And then I think about a healing that I received in terms of the way I look at God. I hear this from people all the time. People tell me, you know, I grew up in the church and I always feel like God's out to get me. <laughs> God is negative and punishing and he keeps, keeps a kind of like the computer in the sky, keeps a record of all my wrongdoings. What I've been trying to proclaim to you in this series is that God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. That's what, when he appeared to Moses, he said, I'm going to let my goodness pass in front of you. And he pronounced his name. He said, I'm a God merciful, gracious, slow to anger, and full of steadfast love. I grew up in the church, grew up Catholic, born, baptized, confirmed in the eighth grade. I don't know where I got that message, but I just got the sense that I was never good enough, that God was a punishing God, probably comes from the Old Testament, whatever it is, that I felt guilty and I never knew that you could have something close and real and intimate and friendly, <laughs> friendly with God, that God isn't against us, he's for us. That's right from Romans chapter eight. If God is for us, who can be against? God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. So I have experienced a revolution, a healing within about my image of God, about the way I see God. Yes, I fear God because God is awesome and almighty, but he's my friend. He was a friend of Abraham, friend of Moses. Jesus brings us into a personal relationship with God. So I want you to experience a healing when it comes to the way you see God. God is for you. He's good. He's merciful. You can let go of the guilt. You can let go of the shame. That's one thing I hear from people a lot. They say, they'll come to me in the confessional and they'll say things like, well, Father, you know, I did this so and so, I did this sin years ago and I've confessed it many times, but I still feel guilty. Well, I experienced a healing at the cross. You come to Jesus crucified and what happens is, it says in Isaiah 53, and it says in the scriptures, the gospels, that he was bruised for our offenses. By his stripes, we are healed. So in other words, what I'm saying is the guilt, the shame, the condemnation that we've had from our sins, and we've all sinned, I was able to let it go at the cross. You see, if you feel guilty, if that keeps coming up in you, the same devil that tempted you to do that sin is the same devil that's going to try to condemn you and heap the guilt upon you. Jesus came to take away the guilt, not to make you feel more guilty. And if the devil keeps reminding you of your past, 
that remind him of his future, the lake of fire. And the reading that I just gave to you from the prophet Isaiah said, Remember not the former things. I am doing something new, streams in the desert. So I've talked about healing in so many different ways, physical, emotional, your image of God, about the past. Receive a healing right now where you need it most. Most of all, I talked about healing as being eternal, that Jesus died for you on the cross, and I want you to receive that salvation. Thank you so much for watching this special episode. I pray you'll watch it again and you'll receive that healing. Please do write me. I want to hear about what God has done in your life. And don't just live, live with passion. Yes, Jesus can heal you everywhere you hurt, physically, emotionally, everywhere you hurt. And I pray that you will receive a healing. Ironically, I got a letter from a doctor, and it even has that snake on the pole here. And she says that we watch your programs and we're so grateful for them. I spread the news about your TV programs. People that are depressed, people having problems, I give them your book. We love you and thank you for your programs and it's signed by a doctor. I think that's so great because this is a woman dedicated to healing, knowing that through my programs, healing and cure is going forth. I want to tell you about my book called He Touched Me. And this book talks about what I just shared in this program. It will help you to receive healing. And I believe it was Emerson who once said that a mind once stretched by a book can never return to its original form. So books will expand your mind and hopefully bring healing to your body and to your soul, especially salvation. So you can get it by going to my website, call that number, please write me at that address. And I want to hear about your healing. I want to hear about your cure. Don't just live, live with passion. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Experience God's greatness. Boost your spiritual life. Realize a revolution of grace. Right now, simply call or go online and order Series 620 DVD or CD, as well as the book Father talked about. People everywhere are being transformed by Father Cedric's teachings. You too can experience renewal and the power of the Holy Spirit. Every purchase supports Father Cedric in his God-given mission to touch lives and save souls. Father Cedric is a Catholic priest with a professed vow of poverty. To order these inspiring resources, simply call 844-FATHER-C, 844-328-4372. An operator will help you. Or write Father Cedric at 430 Bunker Hill Road, Houston, Texas, 77024. Or log on to www.frcedric.org and purchase online. Simple, easy, and confidential. Thank you in advance for your generosity. Together, we are touching lives and saving souls.